This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. ここが視聴覚教室です。すべての席にリスニングとヒアリングの機材が揃えられていて、語学学習にも適しています。Cool. Looks that way. I can tell from a glance that this place is well equipped. Using the time after the homeroom period, I'm getting a small introduction to the school's facilities from Sachi. Normally, this would be the principal's job, but she seems to be occupied with official duties, so I ended up getting another tour from our class rep. Library is all the way to the server and the server. I'm going to be able to find it in the same time and find it in the same time. So, I don't have DVD or Blu-ray or anything. Was this made in, during the time period that Blu-ray actually existed? I don't even remember what year this was made in. Which would make checking a movie out impossible, I guess. <laughs> so, no movie nights in the classroom. Sachi smiles a bit wryly as she speaks. Most of this stuff is probably in that pamphlet somewhere, but Sachi's explanations are comparatively to the point clear and easy to understand. It seems she's actually quite intelligent. She's probably very intelligent, just lacking in social skills. That seems to be a trend in this school. I mean, that's the real reason why you go to the library, isn't it, Marty? Not to get books, but to go to see the movies. Hmm. It looks like they weren't that sloppy on the casting after all. The school drama currently being broadcast. <laughs> Having completed a general review of the school's facilities, Sachi's explanation comes to an end. Thanks, it was a big help. So, I'm already kind of scoping out what the girls are like, and I, thus far out of the four we've met, Sachi seems like the real winner. Like, yeah, she definitely has some social skills that she's lacking in, but she seems very sweet and very intelligent. All of the others are really, really, really weird. <laughs> I guess so. I guess Amine less so, but... Amine has a bit of an attitude at times. Yeah, there's still a classmate I haven't met yet, after all. Maybe the last classmate will be better. Hearing my response, Sachi's brisk tone gives way to a hesitant mumble. What? Oh no, what's about to happen? After a brisk bow, she quickly runs off down the hallway. Did I trigger a death flag just now? I don't think there's a single person in the world who wouldn't worry after that kind of ominous foreshadowing. Well, that might be an overstatement. There are some pretty carefree people out there. I'm just not one of them. Seems like it would be best to be on my guard, or most, more so than usual. The light flooding in through the windows has shifted from overhead to my side. It won't be that long until the sun sets. After parting from Sachi, I walk to the empty hallway alone. My surroundings are very nearly soundless, thanks to my habitually quiet footsteps. However, inside the stillness, I see a definite presence at my destination. She finally show up. I hear a faint sound from the interior of the previously silent classroom. With that confirmation, I slowly open the door. <laughs> oh, you look pleasant, don't you? Of course, you look like Yuri. Already, you, you look like Yuri from DDLC. Just with a much more sour attitude based on your facial expression. The moment I enter the classroom, tension fills the air. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She definitely has a bit of an attitude. <laughs> I can already tell. <laughs> Behind a window, either that or she just has the re resting bitch face. Which, I, I kind of have that a little bit. But my eyebrows aren't furrowed like that. Behind a window seat desk in the middle of the classroom, a chair rattles as its occupant turns to face me. My immediate impression of the girl, she doesn't appear particularly friendly. Yo. While it might not be the most polite first greeting, I call out casually as I approach in order to demonstrate my lack of malicious intent. Sakaki Yumiko, right? Oh, her name's Yumiko? Her expression doesn't change. Sitting on the chair, absolutely stock still, she stares fixedly at me. I'm Kazumi Yuji. I'm a new student here as of today. <laughs> What's the problem? Why is there no music? Why is she just glaring at me? <laughs> Maybe she just hates everyone. I come to a halt in front of her desk. So, I'll be your classmate as well, it seems. Pulling a chair from the desk in front of her, I sit down. At that moment, we're about a meter apart. I mean, 
dude, with all of the desks in this classroom and only six students, you pick the one right next to her. That's kind of making a statement. Nonetheless, the woman stares at me so tensely that she seems to be forgetting to breathe. Rather than staring, her expression could probably be more accurately described as glaring. I wasn't able to introduce myself in the morning. Heard you'd probably be around in the evening. <laughs> Your ancestors probably killed hers, and that's why she's mad. How did she just know? <laughs> oh, I got. <laughs> I guess we did introduce ourselves. I keep talking regardless, but no response is forthcoming. Maybe she's got a psychological problem with men, like Machina. But then again, she didn't try to run when I approached her. Hmm. I changed my position on the seat to face her directly. Straddling the chair, I lean forward slightly. The motion has closed one, the one meter gap between us down to about 70 centimeters. I'd like to at least confirm your identity. Hey. As if to declare her refusal to acknowledge my existence, the woman that stands from her seat and briskly moves to the exit to, uh, to exit the classroom. Wow. Okay. How about at least responding to me? I follow her immediately. The woman opens the classroom's rear door just enough for one person to pass and tries to slip her way outside. Hey. Calling out again, I try to follow her through that gap. Cut! In that moment, the woman forcefully slams the door shut. Well, she seems nice. She clearly closed it, knowing full well I was trying to follow. Her expression betrays surprise. Maybe she's been expecting me to get my hand caught in the door, or back off from having it slammed in my face. Instead, the door she'd attempted to slide closed is firmly held open by my hand, an outcome she apparently had not prepared for. You could have broken my hand, you know that? <laughs> she's like, yeah, I know, I wanted to. Although she's the one who's trying to shatter my fingers, she's glaring at me like I'm the bad guy here. What exactly did I do to deserve this from someone I've just met? I'm just looking for an introduction. Opening the half-shut door, I take a step forward. She doesn't back down. Quite the greeting. Wow, she just tried to slap us! <laughs> wow, okay. Well, that settles it. Sachi's best girl. <laughs> I stop the motion of her hand about five centimeters before its target. It isn't the most efficient block, but for the purpose of diffusing her reckless hostility, an easily comprehensible action seems necessary. I was expecting something of the sort, but you favor the classic slap to the face, I see. Maintaining my grasp on the woman's wrist, I stare her down at short range. Yeah. As for the woman, she's staring right back, her eyes open wide with shock completely still. Well then, let me ask you again. The strong orange glow of the evening sun illuminates the classroom. Are you Sakaki Yumiko? <laughs> her expression, hostile as ever, the woman it slowly opens her mouth. With an air of slight resignation, she clearly unwavering in her refusal of any relation with me, she speaks. So <laughs> ha! The text says you are Yumiko! <laughs> that means that you're, it's true. Okay. Good to meet you. <laughs> As the evening sun fell behind a cloud, its light dimmed and the classroom filled with shadow. With the sound of Yumiko's breath and the faint roar of the waves from behind the walls, the curtain was raised on my normal student life. <laughs> and now we get the introduction, eh? Whoa, hey now. I guess that doesn't technically count as nudity. Wow, we get this animated opening that I can actually show. The World Tree of Brisea. The name of the great tree is Brisea. There are fruits that ripen on the bread. I had to, couldn't read that. Wow, we're getting like actually animated opening. This is cool. So very sweetheart. I haven't seen the sweetheart part yet. <laughs> Marty, yeah, you, you walked away for two seconds and we're getting the animated opening. Why do we need to know the girls' blood types? Is that going to play a role later on? 
Who are these people? What the heck? Wait, was Ma was Makina holding a shotgun? That's I'm very confused right now. What the heck? Sure enough, we're the only guy. Well, that was an interesting opening. <laughs> Marty's just here one. I was wondering why they have their blood types listed. Marty was wondering why they have their measurements there. You know why they have their measurements there, Marty. And it's gross. <laughs> I didn't even notice, because <laughs> I was going by so fast, I was more concerned about one of the CGs seeming to be Makita holding a shotgun and aiming it at someone. <laughs> is that going to happen? <laughs> the shotgun's going to be bigger than she is. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> when will the guns be back? I don't know. This is my first playthrough. The period of the school day before classes begin is fundamentally blank, meaningless time. They say it's always best to arrive 20 minutes early, but preparing for a class takes 60 minutes at most. After that, there's not much to do other than wander around awkwardly. Oh, 60 seconds at most, whoops. Still, I've always imagined school life as a fairly relaxed experience. A part of me was actually wondering if a little aimless downtime might be enjoyable in its way. But unfortunately... What, again? <laughs> Did you just try to cut me? I'm sorry, dude. That is a knife in your hand. Did you just try to stab me? Oh, you are worst girl by miles, if that's the case. <laughs> that slightly pitiful fantasy was shattered all too quickly. Of course, I'm not going to break a sweat from any attack of Yumiko's, but being slashed at with a blade isn't the kind of pleasant breather I had in mind. What the heck? Expel this girl! She's trying to murder me! <laughs> I guess she had thought of it as a particularly well-timed attack, judging from the shocked gaze she's directing at me as she catches her breath. Of course, given that conspicuous clicking sound and her plainly audible footsteps, she might as well have been screaming, Here I come. But... Blood types, Marty says, are very important. Depending on what your blood type is, depends on personality, aggravation, and how laid back you are, according to Asia, at least. Being blood type B, for example, means you're adventurous and charming. This is sounding like some of this horoscope stuff that I like making fun of. <laughs> Time moves at half speed for in my immediate vicinity. Giving a straight answer would be a pain, so I pull something out of my ass. He's Bayonetta. <laughs> yeah, I'm just screwing with you. <laughs> Well, you've already, you're already pretty clear on your attempts to murder me for literally no reason. Maybe it's just me, but I think trying to stab your classmate is somewhat worse. This woman's copy of the criminal code seems to be missing the page on attempted murder. <laughs> this girl's like, I am Inigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> but judging from the way she momentarily bought my nonsense, she's she's unexpectedly airheaded. Maybe a bit naive would be the nicer way to put it. <laughs> oh, I will. I'll never forget that scowl. There's only six of us here. It would be harder to forget. Still glaring in my direction, Yumiko retracts the blade of her box cutter. Oh, she ain't even using a knife. She's using a box cutter. <laughs> That's how she was able to get it into the school. And snorting in displeasure, leaves in a flutter with her of her skirt. I hope she leaves with her skirt. Hey, this is not my fault! This girl's crazy! <laughs> when I return to the classroom, Amine strikes up a conversation. Amine also seems relatively normal. I guess the story of the knife assault in question has already spread around the classroom, as my problem with Yumiko seems to be common knowledge. Well, yes, attempted murder tends to spread. It's not like she's doing me any harm, but I can't say I'm enjoying this. What do you mean? She's literally trying to kill you! <laughs> what if she's the niece of his master or something? 
That's possible. <laughs> in our first encounter, I had approached the stubbornly silent Yumiko in a physical sense. The outcome was her initial act of rejection. In part, that might have been the result of my own heightened wariness. Sachi's heavy-handed foreshadowing put me on guard, and I have a tendency to not trust someone I'm meeting the first time. At that time, while I certainly felt animosity from her, it wasn't so intense as to discourage me from approaching. However, from our second encounter on, Yumiko bared open hostility toward me. What's worse, apparently having come to the conclusion that she wasn't a match for me barehanded, she's been swinging around a box cutter of all things. According to Amine, it seems that Yumiko has something of a habit of brandishing retractable knives at people. How is she allowed to be in this school? Oh wait, because her daddy owns the school, so I'm betting. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Sakaki was the name of the company that owns the school. Of course, her goal is usually more intimidation than anything else, but speaking as the target this time, I can sense there's a part of her that's seriously trying to stab me. It's not the best feeling in the world. <laughs> You were very nonchalant about this, just like, oh yeah, sometimes she threatens us with a box cutter, but it's not that bad. Give her a pizza cutter. It's, she could never get through airport security. That is true. I'd really prefer to avoid that kind of recognition. I'm sorry, are you blaming me for her trying to stab me just because I introduced myself to her? That's so bass backwards. Didn't notice. I'm pretty perceptive when my life's in danger, but I don't really feel that level of threat from Yumiko. Neither is he. My master did say I was exceptionally unskilled in that department. At any rate, I want to do something about Yumiko's aggressive rejection of me. For that purpose, I'll need to talk to someone familiar with her circumstances. Hi, hi. Hey, principal. <laughs> Yumiko's trying to stab me. Stop it. <laughs> with the attendance book in her hand, as usual, our carefree principal appears. I guess Chizuru is the only one I can ask. She's the only adult here. In conclusion, Yumiko seems to hate me with a passion. Wow! Worst principal ever! <laughs> he's one of six... Oh, he's the one guy in a school with six students. Yeah, at least one of... I'm guessing all the girls are going to be crushing after him at some point. Because it's a dating sim. That's what happens. Oh, let's hear it then. I don't think this is about you. I only said what I was thinking. Was I wrong? Got it. In deference to your feelings, no matter how much I think you're lazing around, I'll keep it quietly buried in my heart from now on. Good enough? What do you want from me? Spare me the vague complaints. What's your pleasure? Do you have an idea? Yes. Please stop. <laughs> her voice doesn't match her authority. Yeah, she's got a very squeaky voice. The principal, cup in hand, lowers herself across from the sofa I'm reclining on. This place just opened recently, right? Hmm. I see. What does that have to do with her rejecting me? Before responding to my question, she takes a sip of coffee from the cup in her hand. Ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Frightening? Principal Tachibana takes a pen in her empty hand and jabs it towards me to emphasize her point. Nanode, 
and you see no problem with this. You are a failure as a principal. Hazing, is it? A bit of bullying comes with being a fresh recruit, but I didn't expect the same here. Yeah, uh, this isn't something you laugh off, Tachibana. Apparently unconvinced by the idea of Sakaki stealing my lunch money, Principal Tachibana hides a snort of laughter behind her hand. Although it is certainly amusing considering the balance of our physical strength, I don't see how I can manage a decent student life at this rate. I am honored to have provided a moment of amusement for our perpetually overworked principal, but I came here hoping to have a path towards overcoming this challenge illuminated by your educational guidance. I said that nicely! What, what do you want from me? <laughs> Cranky from beginning to end, ultimately the principal didn't provide me with any useful advice. Wow! She didn't- she's not even gonna do anything about Yumiko trying to stab me. Okay, wow. Terrible management of the school. This is what a school is like, so figure it out for yourself. What? <laughs> this is not what school is like! <laughs> this is a farce! Get my lawyer on the phone! A normal school life means a few problems like this? <laughs> really? <laughs> this is... R wow! This is... This is... Incompetence of a whole different level. I do have to admit she managed to dodge the issue reasonably well with that last line. No, that was... no. In any case, since she didn't give any clear answer for me, I'm left with no choice but to do as she says and try to work on this over time. It's not really my style to go with the flow like this, but if that's the proposal of my educational guide, there's no helping it. <laughs> oh my gosh, so we are getting these manga-style, like, panels. <laughs> <laughs> Yuji looks so done. <laughs> no, she's the only one who's doing anything. Wow! <laughs> The results of going with the flow? Yumiko's attacks have been continuing without any particular change to date. Everyone's blaming me for this! <laughs> Look, could you quit it already? Her movement's thrown off by my sudden sidestep, Yumiko staggers forward unsteadily. She tries desperately to regain her balance, resulting in a ridiculous pose in strong contrast with her usual haughty demeanor. <laughs> What's with that smile, Michiru? Michiru lets out an involuntary giggle at the spectacle. Uh-oh. She's instantly pierced by Yumiko's furious glare. <laughs> wow! <laughs> really, Makina? <laughs> Ignoring Michiru as she cowers behind her desk, Yumiko storms out of the classroom in a towering rage. <laughs> Principal is utterly incompetent. Yeah. <laughs> again, you have ribbons in your eyes. What the heck is with that, Makina? Why is everyone so absolutely weird? <laughs> I'm gonna giggle every time I see that Michiru face. <laughs> Scenes like this one were very familiar by now, with the exception of Michiru, who everyone seems perfectly calm. Even if this little routine doesn't bother them, as a directly concerned party, it's problematic. Hey, Amine, why, why is everyone so low-key about attempted murder in this school? Seriously. <laughs> In response to my call, she points to herself with her index finger, silently asking, Me? When I nod, she approaches in her usual pointlessly sexy way. Oh. Yep, Sachi's the only likable one now. I'm sorry, do you actually want me to treat you like a sex worker? Yuji-kun, if you want to do that, you can do that. 
Wow. So thus far, in the school, we have a girl who's trying to murder us. A girl who's being ridiculously openly flirty with us. A girl who is the epitome of a tsundere with, I'm guessing, some mental problems. Uh, we've got an eight-year-old girl, and we have Sachi. Just want to point that out there. I'll be sure to keep this offer in mind, but that's not what I need today. Huh? You've known her, Yumiko, for a long time, right? Any ideas about the reason she's rejecting me this intensely? <laughs> I remember when Sachi was at my high school, Marty. <laughs> Every high school has Sachi in it. I see. She just seems like a sour lady. Certainly, Yumiko hardly seems the type to open up and reveal herself to someone just because they've known each other for a while. I guess I'll have to find a solution myself after all. Thanks anyway. Let me know if anything comes to mind. With those words, I move to exit the classroom. If Yumiko's rejection continues to take this form, I'll have no choice but to ask the principal's advice again. At the moment, I open the door and prepare to leave. I stop at the sound of Amane's voice. Hmm? I mean, she doesn't see me as a girl, because I'm not. I think she might just be sexist. Yumiko probably has some problems at home. Oh, for sure. But guess what? I don't care if you're having problems at home. That doesn't give you the right to try to murder people. She's saying the same things as the principal, huh? Does it feel that way to you as well, Amine? Mm-hmm. It's a little hard to take that seriously, given the flow of this conversation. It's... <laughs> this is so ridiculous! It's... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, uh, Principal, Yumiko is trying to stab me and kill me. Hmm, sounds like a personal problem. This is the kind of thing that you just encounter at high school, so deal with it yourself. I'm busy. <laughs> <sighs> I return to the dorm and wander the hallways without any particular objective. Compared to shutting myself up alone in my room, it's easier to gather my thoughts. One of the group, huh? I recall Amine's parting words. Oh, I really hope you can't date the eight-year-old. That would be so icky. It's easy for her to say, but actually getting that island of a human being to recognize me as a friend seems next to impossible. First of all, we're not even on speaking terms yet. Oh, this late already? The sun is sinking below the window frame, casting shadows along the hall. About time for me to return to my room. Guess I'll try talking to her tomorrow. I scratch my head as I turn toward my bedroom. The sound of my slippers echoes roughly in the hallway. Yumiko might have her own set of internal rules, since she hasn't tried to attack me even once while inside the dorm. It's not that I was particularly off my guard as a result of that assumption. Rather, it was probably because it happened at this particular time of day. Or so I would reflect to myself later. Evening, a hallway in the dormitory lit by the evening sun. As the flash of thrusting light, I react instinctively. And grab her arm firmly. <laughs> You in trouble now. With her arm captured, Yumiko's face stiffens. The box cutter, blade still extended, rattles around at her feet, turning in circles around the handle. Trying for the element of surprise. <laughs> oh yeah, you better be afraid. Yumiko's expression changes from shock to fear. That's what tips me off that I'm not wearing my peaceful face. Oh, sorry. That came out of nowhere. So I couldn't hold back. She's gonna break into your room and try to kill you later, I'm sure of it, yeah. I didn't want to frighten her. I thought I could play the normal student. I wanted to convince myself that I could. Look, Yumiko. Still gripping her arm, I look into her eyes and speak. I'm not your enemy. <laughs> Yumiko's expression betrays uncertainty for just a moment. But just as quickly, it settles back into her customary mask. But it doesn't look like you're convinced of that yet. So let me say one thing. Releasing her arm, I pick up the box cutter lying in front of her feet. Carefully retracting the blade, I hold it out to Yumiko. You're giving it back to her? I would not. I won't cause you harm. 
And I won't pry into your business, either. That's a promise. So stop this. It's pointless. <laughs> Observe me and reach your own conclusions. If I'm lying, you can always try stabbing me again. Stumbling, Yumiko retreats a single step. Bye. He played that coolly. <laughs> Turning around, I return to my room. Normally, Yumiko would see such a chance to attack, but something's different now. Her elongated shadow is still, and the hallway is silent except for the small sound of her breathing. Back to the hallway! After that day, Yumiko's attacks came to an abrupt halt. Hopefully, I can use this as an opportunity to slightly improve our relationship. I'm trying to live a normal campus life, so it would be nice to minimize the number of classmates who want me dead. That's kind of a priority. Oh hey, wow! Casual outfit already, eh? I was not expecting that. I thought you'd have to go on the girl's individual route in order to get those. Yo! Ah, uh, still, still a sour puss, eh? As usual, to call Yumiko's behavior when we come across each other curt would be an understatement. But at the very least, judging from the clearly different way she's looking at me, her observation period seems to be ongoing. I'll answer, unless you want to know my weaknesses. <laughs> what a shame. Come up with something else. She occasionally talks to me like this, but instead of friendly chats about our lunch plans, we have investigative inquiries and near careful negotiations. Even so, I suppose it's a considerable improvement over outright bloodshed. <laughs> if you go on her route, you start dating her, and then she kills you at the end, just like, you fool. <laughs> Is that your idea of social interaction between classmates? Right then. I opened my hand in an exaggerated American-style shrug. Well, good luck to you, Yumiko. I think it's time to leave before she starts probing any further. Want me to call you by your last name? Seems like she's hung up on that point. After those events, I've been intentionally addressing Yumiko by her first name. The family name would actually be more appropriate here, but I've got a bit of a reason for doing this. Says the woman who's never referred to me as anything but you. <laughs> if the canon girl is the eight-year-old, then I will, I will riot. <laughs> hmm, so you're saying as classmates we should both use last names. Oh, she actually does want that. Yumiko's expression clearly reads, oh crap. Isn't that the starting point for building a cordial relationship? You think you're superior to me? Alright. In that case, I'll take our friendship to the next level by making a pleasant nickname for you. Not to worry, you can do the same for... Alright. It might be a little early for that, so I propose starting with last names. Yumiko hesitates briefly. But before long, she opens her mouth stiffly and in a tight voice. After speaking those words with a cramped attempt at a smile, she stalks off. Yeah, best regards, Sakaki. Thus, after a great hardship, I finally succeeded in establishing an absolute minimum level of communication with my fifth classmate. Seems this student life thing is pretty rough in its own way. <laughs> <laughs> 